Hi, my name is Sam Crane, and today we're going to be going over a Django and Ross integration. The goal is to be able to see real-time telemetry from a simulated robot. Now, this is a demonstration. It's not a full tutorial. I have an article linked in the description as well, links to the two different Django uh, or the two different GitHub repositories I've set up. So please check those out if you want to apply this and build this on your side. Otherwise, I'm just trying to show here how it should look when you get it running. So to get started, let's start with the client. Uh, this is a ROS client. Um, we're going to be running a uh, ROS launch file. Um, to do that, you're going to want to make sure that your Catkin environment is set up. If that doesn't make sense, I would recommend checking out some of the ROS tutorials. They've got a great set of tutorials on ROS.org. Um, but now that I've got my environment set up, let's go ahead and run ROS launch. ROS launch Django ROS turtle sim client run.launch. Now we're running that because we have a run.launch script, and that script describes two nodes the turtle simulation itself, and then our own code we developed, which subscribes to that turtle's pose and then pushes that to a WebSocket communication. So if we run that, you're going to see the turtle sim pop up and we're going to see an error. Now that error is saying that it wasn't able to create the WebSocket uh, communication, right? Because And that's because the server is not live right now. So let's go ahead and get the server running. Now on the server side, you're going to need two things. You're going to need a Redis server, which is going to be like a broker for the WebSocket data. And then you're also going to need the Django server. Before you set those up, make sure to install all your requirements, uh, get a virtual environment set up. If you don't understand how to do that, check out a tutorial. It's very, you know, lots of tutorials online on how to set up Python virtual environments. They're not required, but they're very helpful for keeping your dependencies uh, particular to a project but I'm in my virtual environment. I've got it set up. So I'm going to do Redis server. And that gets the Redis server just running. And I'm going to run python manage.py run server. So you're going to notice one thing, you know, if you've been a Django developer but not as involved in uh, the channel side, this is an ASGI server. It's slightly different. You'd have to set up the server just a little bit different, but what it allows is asynchronous HTTP commands, as well the ability to handle uh, WebSocket channels and communications. So I go into a lot of detail on how all that works in here in my article, check it out. Um, but for now, just understand that this ROS node is sending its data to a consumer here that handles the WebSocket communication, and then that WebSocket communication um, can be accessed through this uh, web application and it displays that data in real time onto a browser. So we got our Redis server running. We've got our, our Django server running. We're going to go ahead and launch the ROS node. And what you see here is that, well, first you see that, which is fine um, <laughs> at this scale. Um, But what you're going to see here is that we got a handshake for the WebSocket robot guy. So in this particular application, I just hard coded the name guy, but that is actually a variable that you can change and it just describes which robot this data is coming from. Um, so we've created the handshake, it's connected. So now data is being piped in real time from the simulation to the web server. So let's go ahead and check the web server. So I'm going to reload. And yes, you can see, OK, this is the position of the robot. So how do we control the robot? Well, we need one more terminal. So that's, this is going to be the fourth terminal. Um, I'm going to restart this. So it's ROS run turtle sim turtle teleop key. And if we run that, check it out, we can control this through our keyboard. Um, now this is basically the entire tutorial. What you're seeing here is that I can control this robot 
through some kind of teleop, the simulation updates from those controls. And then another node looks for the state of the robot. It passes that data from here to the server. The server stores it in Redis and communicates between different clients to pass the data back and forth. And now, with all that together, you can get real-time data from your robots to a web application. The other thing that's really cool about this is that by leveraging the existing web servers that we have, uh, we don't have to worry as much about security. Security is an issue that's been dealt with over and over. Um, I could throw an SSL encryption on this and I could throw some you know, user authentication on the WebSocket endpoints and I could have particular people, you know, once authenticated, be able to access particular robots. Um, and now you start being able to see like, well, okay, where does, where does this go? And it, it's you know, the ability to manage and see in real time the state of a fleet of robots, um, you know, it's pretty awesome. So uh, at any rate, thanks for listening. Um, let me know in the comments if anything was confusing, uh, anything else you want to learn. In this tutorial, I'm just surfacing data, but actually interacting and passing back commands from a web application is its own thing. Would love to get into how you can do that. And otherwise, um, thanks for listening. Hope this helps with any project you're working on. Cool. Bye.